Alrighty, hello and welcome everyone to Panzer Dragoon Saga. Uh, this is a 1998 role-playing game developed by Team Andromeda, published by Sega for the Sega Saturn. Uh, it is known in Japan as Azel Panzer Dragoon RPG. Uh, this is what many people would consider to be the crown jewel of the Panzer Dragoon franchise, and in many ways, the crown jewel of the Sega Saturn. Uh, this game is routinely considered to be the best Sega Saturn game. Uh, it is a gigantic cult classic, and one of the rarest uh, games of all time. Uh, this game routinely sells for over a thousand to two thousand dollars on uh, resale in North America, and I believe even more in Europe. Um, the Japanese copies are not incredibly expensive; they're about two hundred, three hundred dollars. But uh, this game uh, was was obviously published pretty late in the Saturn's lifetime, and uh, had a pretty low production run uh, in the U.S. especially. Um, this game uh, had a very troubled development. Uh, it was sort of positioned as a, a means for Sega and Team Andromeda to compete against the likes of Final Fantasy um, and sort of the coming era of PlayStation dominance. Uh, and so this game was really a last hurrah for the Saturn, and it is probably the single most technologically advanced Saturn game that was released on the console. Um, this game is incredibly impressive uh, for many reasons, uh, least of all including its uh, very incredible, for the time, uh, 3D FMVs and its CGI, uh, as well as its, uh, and remember, this was, this was back in, in 1998, before Final Fantasy X did it, uh, almost full voice acting. This game has voice acted cutscenes for a JRPG. Uh, which is absolutely bananas for the time. <laughs> uh, this game is four discs long. Uh, it is relatively short. It's anywhere between 12 if you're playing solo to about maybe 20, 24 hours if we're playing on stream. Um, this game is incredible. It does it all. It's very comparable to something like Chrono Trigger. Uh, if you like all of the really ahead of its time stuff that Chrono Trigger did, you will probably find a lot to like in this game. Uh, on top of that, uh, I want to talk about this game's development a little bit because it's been... Um, it, it, was, it was very troubling for Sega. Uh, this game was developed by the same team, Team Andromeda, that did Panzer Dragoon and Panzer Dragoon 2 Zwei. Um, it basically, uh, was, everything was riding on this game, uh, in a lot of ways, and, uh, multiple people died during the development of this game, uh, not necessarily attributed to this game's development alone, but, uh, famously, uh, famously, Futatsuki Yukio, the director of this game, says that when he, uh, goes through trouble in life, he thinks about how at least it's not as hard as his life was when he was making Panzer Dragoon Saga. Uh, this game was grueling to get out. Uh, it, it was years of crunch and development trouble and uncertainty. Uh, in a way, these developers, this team, knew they were making something special and fought incredibly hard to get it out uh, against all odds. Uh, and not only did the Sega Saturn completely fail, especially in the US, this game barely got known by anyone, barely got to get played. Um, and it's only been in really recent years that more people have even discovered this game exists and discovered how good it is and I would like to think that it is art that is meaningful enough to offset um, you know this this horrible stress that everyone put into playing it because it really is a remarkable video game and something that is horribly wrongly forgotten by time and in a lot of ways this game is the shining example of why you should be emulating games and you should be playing old games uh, this game has aged incredibly gracefully 
Um, and the fact that it's not on modern systems when it can be so easily accessed is uh, just... It's not an excuse for not playing it. Uh, people should play this game. This game is incredible. Um, and of course, we're all waiting for a remaster or a potential remake. That would be amazing. Um, and there's been rumblings that that stuff is coming. But uh, as it stands, this game is a very amazing video game and is highly worth playing. So with that being said, uh, let's play Panzer Dragoon Saga. We do, Edge. Nihil, the Insurrentia. All those sums, see a goal. Mary Oost, Prelidus, expert rule. Tumas, cognitum, lua. Quidu nostra, defensio. D. Possetu, cognitum. The Envitus, and I will in Purgus, Devon, Est Peltina, and Penya. Devon, Mest, Lutema. S. De Peltina, in Penya. To S. Nostem, Praestem, Noster Defensio. Hec, Exceller, in Pelnia. Te Omnio, Aude Gescalde. Circus Mesentis! Hostis? Likua? Ega o Hogotta Bumega Horon de Susene. Casseno Chikara Ushinata Jinduiva. Miss Karanga Umidashta. Iden Shikaizo near the Saves Haken of Via Gazaret. Tasongare no Jida Yosmo Stay. Danga. Ushina Rata Bumme no Chikara o Karita.帝国が出現した時から再び時代は回り始めた。帝国の手によって発掘された旧世紀の兵器は人類の生存を脅かす多数の巨大生物を撃退し、再び我らの時代が来たと人々を歓喜させた。しかし、力は欲望を生み、
The cinematic ambitions run deep here. You can really tell already. That should look familiar. We've been here before too. Ikrium Diana Miriadium Barts, Ye Integru Medium Civitas. Leartel Unuel, Who Ringle Sabta Rikia, 
Lothwing put in here forth. Forest team, importer. Perlitus <laughs> ye crimen. Nole motarsem impenia. Dead due, Diolangus impenia banais. Dicia dev ergaterium. Impenia little winter. Tell you, do a drafter. Dena. Faniba Kremen. Norgesker de Banya Rapraya Teril. That's a uh, Chikao Utska. Katanaus, Gurigum, Oring. Uh, voice of Goldie Roger from One Piece. Eggman from Sonic. Utska Chikao. The one who controls Edge, what is your name? Toaster. Toaster. Me Toaster. It is my real name. Zahanort from Kingdom Hearts as well. Vo uh, father of Otsuka Akio, who plays uh, Arwen in this game. Solid Snake, many other characters that you are probably familiar with. Bato, Ghost in the Shell. So this is in Japanese. So you may uh, recognize that voice actor. That's Kaoru from uh, Evangelion, as well as many other smarmy, uh, white-haired anime boys. That's Ishida Akira, one of the most famous and prolific Japanese voice actors. So here we are. This is Panzer Dragoon Saga. This is what this game looks like. Now, it might not look like much nowadays. Uh, this was insane running on a Saturn at the time. Obviously, we just opened with like eight minutes of cutscenes. That, that was unbelievable, unfathomable at this time. Uh, this was back when games, uh, when they, you know, started, if you were not playing the game in five minutes, uh, people were like, what are you doing? This is awful. Why would you do this? Uh, so this game has an interesting menu. As you can see, we have a cursor that we can open, a reticle, to open things. An object from the ancient age. Maybe I should take a closer look. You can, uh, you can examine things when they're afar and interact with them when they're near. Something is shining in the darkness. It's too far away. And gun. An ancient gun with a dragon design. What's that down there? Haley says, uh, are there any of the rail shooter segments in this game or are they completely gone? Uh, that is a complicated question to answer and we will answer it very shortly. Uh, 
So I am playing this on a Saturn controller, technically. It's an, it's an 8 bit do M M30, but same form factor as a Saturn controller. So I get the full layout. This game makes me so happy. I love these cutscenes. I love how cinematic this is. I wish modern games looked like this. I want to shout out the music by Kobayashi Saori uh, in this game. Incredible composer, incredible OST. In Japanese, he kind of said, like, that just now, is that what I'm about to become? Or is that is what is to come? The translation for this game is genuinely very, very good, but whenever there's like a disconnect, I'll do my best to translate. So now we are moving towards our first moment of actual uh, 
free roam gameplay. <laughs> All right, so we have we have our world. We press uh, press the B button on the Sega Saturn controller to fly. Same controls as uh, the rail shooter, with the exception that you get to choose when you're moving and when you're not moving. Uh, C will open the uh, reticle for targeting. Up and down, obviously, move you up and down. A will also open the reticle. R turns you when you're flying, I believe. Or yeah, barrel rolls. So yeah. We can now open the menu, see all of our different things, change settings. Don't really want to, to change anything. Sound stereo mono, pretty typical stuff. Item list. Uh, shell plate. Shell plating used as armor for military weaponry. Soldier guide. Manual given to Imperial recruits. The uncivilized people of the frontier fear the ancient machines and subject them to their idiotic beliefs. Our duty is to locate the buried finds and return them to their rightful heir, his highness. We will use the power of the ancient ones to cleanse the world of the monsters and return humans to their former glory. Expanding the empire, including securing as many ruins and machines as possible, will achieve this goal. If anyone stands in your way, eliminate them. They resist out of ignorance. The empire has a duty to protect them. We fight not to invade, but to teach the truth. The greater good depends on the completion of your mission. Haley says, I didn't want to say it, but this game is uh, reminding me of Drakengard. Interesting. That is an interesting direction to go. Uh, I would not say that this game is particularly Drakengard-like as it goes on, but I'm sure there's some influence there. Uh, this game was relatively influential in the industry. A gun used in the ancient age, it looks like you can upgrade it. Elevator key and Impenya coin, currency used by the Empire. We don't have Berserk list and we can't customize our weapon. Here we go. So we have our dragon, it's got a list of stats, some useful things here, but we aren't going to worry too much about it. So as you see on the map, things will get listed. We can break them. Stellarium. Let's look at what that is. Element used as a source of energy. I believe those are just healing items. down. More Stellarium. Field map. Nice. We'll look at that in a minute. I don't think I can interact with anything down there yet. There we go, Dynas chip. Uninteractable right there. So in general, it's pretty easy to, uh, to navigate in this game. You don't really miss out on anything too much. Nice. 
We just want to break all these chests just to make sure we get everything. Because these will help us afford things later. So this game compared to most JRPGs is like less loot and less just like random junk. I need to lower myself so that I just auto select it. There we go. Another Dynas chip. And we'll look at those in just a second. Read their descriptions. Hello, Sam. Hello, Crimson. Love to see you in chat. I get to show off one of my favorite games. <laughs> so excited about this. So by default, I believe it will just auto-target whatever it believes is closest to your the plane that you're on, so. Oop. Oh, okay, this is so this is a field map. We'll just zoom down here. This way. Let's make sure we didn't miss anything on the secondary path. I don't think we did. Oh, maybe we did. Yeah, we did. Dinos chip. Okay, nice. And look at these. I like these little environmental interactions. Look at these birds. Sometimes they fly. Anyway, that's all that's over here. There will be another little area that we investigate over here. I think we have to return to it after, though. Now, I have played this game uh, once through completely, and then I have uh, played sections of it many times. Uh, probably two or three times each. Uh, when I did when I did my first playthrough, I played this game originally in, I want to say, 2017 or 2018. Um, and then since then I have uh, revisited it a few times in Japanese uh, just to kind of compare the different uh, different things in the game and like kind of see if the translation's good and kind of revisit my favorite moments so uh, I have some uh, some relative sense of, of everything in this game so let's look at our items so again, Dynas Chip. Ancient currency, no monetary value, but can be exchanged for money. Solarium shell bait. Gibson lens. Optical sensor for a long-range torpedo weapon. Nando drill. Part of an ex uh, excavation machine used to penetrate rock. Gemstone. A raw aromatic stone used to repel monsters. Coolia dung. So coolias are uh, the thing that Panzer Dragoon 2 referred to as kuriat. Uh... I am not 100% clear why the name has changed. My guess is they're technically the same word in Japanese as kudia. Uh, and in English, it was kudiat and kulia here. I think it's probably a text width thing for translation. This is a custom font obviously being used. And the, the length <laughs> would be a concern if it was kuriat. So I believe they just retranslated it here as kulia, which I, I believe is the proper name for it in the franchise now. It's the it's the version that you'll see in Orta as well when it comes up in text logs, I believe. Fossilized Kulia feces from millions of years ago. And Gara, various types of rocks found near excavation sites. Now I wanted to know where the field map was. Here we go, display map. Okay, here it is. So this, the map uh, very conveniently will also just like 
highlight where we've actually been. This is a feature I wish more JRPGs and more games like this had. I, I kind of just wish every single game ever would just, if it gave you a map, just highlight where you've actually walked. <laughs> An ancient device. And here we can save our game. Toaster, level one, 23 minutes. And here we are, back at the excavation site. I think this game has a really incredible sense of place. So here you can see when we turn the camera, our dragon is just waiting over there. There's my dragon. Looks like he's waiting for me. And that's kind of the way it is with every single environment you walk through in the game. The entrance to the ruins. Entrance is blocked by rubble. Now, I love this, like, almost Silent Hill-esque, uh, way you can interact with stuff. All the values are, valuables are gone. There's not much left. I think we just picked up what, uh, what was that? Is that a Dynas chip? Or Stellarium? Dynas chip? No use, there's nothing inside. It's a relic from the ancient age. Oh, that's a chest. Isn't it? No, that's rebar. Anything in any of these boxes? Oop. It's no use. There's nothing left. What? There's something inside. Stellarium. Hello, Esper. Welcome. ちょ。行きちゃったのか。よく無事で。隊長、早く行け。奴らは谷に沿って北へ向かってる。あの男、クレイメンたちを追い、本物の帝国軍が来る前。クレイメン誰なんです、そいつは。それに何で追わなき
homing laser. The dragon's normal attack requires only one gauge to fire. The gun. Edge's normal attack also requires only one gauge to fire, best used on individual enemies. So you have both an AoE and a single target attack straight off the bat in this game. Use item requires one full gauge. To use an item, open the battle menu, select items, use the D-pad to highlight the item, and press C. Berserk techniques. Using berserk techniques, the dragon's special attacks vary according to type, one to three gauges. Holy Sphere. Scorching Sphere of Fire. Needs two gauge. Actions may be taken at any time as long as the required gauges are charged. Unused portions of the gauge are not lost. You may perform an action as soon as the required gauges are charged or wait to deliver a series of actions. Haley says, it can be hard to tell for me with Japanese, but the acting seems really good for the time. It was incredible at the time. Games just weren't really like this at this point. Although not displayed, enemies have gauges as well. Each enemy's gauge is charged at a different speed. Most enemies' actions differ depending on where your dragon is located when the enemy attacks. The battle radar shows where your dragon is located in relation to the enemy. Enemies will always appear in the center. The colors on the battle radar indicate the danger level of your enemy's attack. For example, if your dragon remains in an uncolored area, the enemies will only use weak attacks. To evade danger, your dragon can move to the front, back, left, or right of any enemy. This is called positioning. Positioning can be done by moving left or right in 90 degree turns. So this is where the rail shooter elements of this game come in. You are constantly moving and attacking in real time as your gauges charge uh, to deal with groups of enemies and you are judged on how quickly and efficiently you deal with enemies. Positioning does not drain the gauge, so you may move at any time, but no charging occurs while positioning. A green area means that the enemy cannot attack in that direction, therefore this area is a temporary safe zone. Red area means that the enemy will deliver heavy damage if it attacks. If you can avoid the red area and stay in the green area, victory will be yours. Keep in mind that while positioning, the gauge will not increase, so more time you spend moving around, the worse your ranking will be. An enemy's defensive ability varies according to which direction you attack from. Attacking weaker areas will cause more damage. This enemy has average defensive rating from the front. Attack here and it will suffer average damage. The defensive rating on the sides, left or right, is high, so attacking here causes little damage. To inflict heavy damage, aim for an enemy's weak spot. The area is marked weak. There are also enemies that counterattack and or dodge attacks from certain directions, or even enemies vulnerable from only one direction. So as you can see, positioning is vital to dodging attacks and fighting effectively. Mastering this technique is key to ensuring your survival.
homing lasers. Dragon's normal attack shoots multiple lasers. The number of lasers shot at once is limited. The laser will only target the closest enemies, so although lasers can inflict more damage than Edge's gun, you cannot aim at a distant enemy. Lasers provide, uh, prove ineffective, however, against optic-resistant enemies. If you aim at optic-resistant enemies, anti-laser will be displayed. Concentrate your attack on a weakness or a single enemy uh, with Edge's gun. It is ineffective, however, against physically resistant enemies. If you aim at these type of enemies, anti-shot will be displayed. I want to target the red one. There we go. Anti-laser on the red one. So we want to use the gun on the red one. Berserk. The dragon's special attack and enemy's defensive rating is nullified by this type of attack. It proves to be the most effective against enemies with high defensive ratings and large groups of weaker foes. Some techniques heal your dragon. Each berserk technique consumes a given amount of BP. If you do not have the required BP, you cannot use the technique. So we don't have enough for laser storm. Extra class, attack class. All we have is uh, enough for Holy Sphere currently, so we'll use that. Effects according, uh, vary according to type. Attack, deadly to nearby enemies. Spiritual affects all enemies. Agility swarms small groups. And defense is healing and shields. Selections are made by command icons. Laser and gun attacks can be made with a single button press. Abnormal status attack. This is going to tell us about status effects, I believe. There are certain enemies that can use special attacks to create abnormal conditions in your dragon status. On the radar, the red area indicates not only a high risk of great physical damage, but the potential of a special attack. The dragon was hit with a special attack that paralyzed it. The status of your dragon displayed here in the status display area. When your dragon is paralyzed, it cannot fire lasers or use its berserk techniques. Your dragon can only reposition itself. Be aware that the only uh, the, that only the dragon status is affected using items in the gunner edges action, so these can be performed regardless of status. Status eventually returns to normal over time, but you may use an item to restore status sooner. Here are the abnormal conditions other than stun. Poison is poison, slow, gauge charges slowly, stop, dragon can't move, pain, uh, it re reduces your defense, and bind only allows your first gauge to charge, limiting you to one gauge actions. This game is genuinely so cool. <laughs> There are six total Berserk classes for are earned through experience, and the remaining two are hidden. Attack class affects all enemies, delivering heavy damage to enemies nearby, but little damage to distant enemies. Spells are obtained by reaching a predetermined level. Spiritual class affects all enemies, inflicting full damage regardless of distance. Spells cause the same amount of damage to all attacking enemies, very effective against groups. These spells are obtained simply by reaching a predetermined level. Defense class is regaining HP and casting shield spells. Healing spells can be cast with only one gauge full. These spells are obtained by reaching levels. Agility class is multiple enemies and retreats from battle. So this uh, will deliver the same number of attacks regardless of the number of enemies. Effective against smaller groups, these spells are uh, obtained by reaching a certain level. And then the two other classes, full gauge and extra, are special. An enemy's gauge can fill while you're moving your dragon. In this scenario, the enemy will attack as soon as you finish moving. If you press a button while positioning your dragon, an action will initiate before your enemies attack. This is called beating them to the punch. I've always found this little translation funny because uh, in Japanese, it's like a it's like a punchy term. Like a, like I don't mean punchy like literally punching. I mean like it's like a yoji jukugo, which means like it is one specific word that just means like attacking your enemy before they attack but we don't have that in English. They just translate it and put it in red as beating them to the punch as if it's a special term, which is very funny to me. You can do this while an enemy or a player is moving or attacking. When the gauges are full, if you want to perform attacks and combinations, initiate an action and immediately press a button to perform another action. Learn this technique well and you will not only defeat enemies quickly, but will also prevent them from attacking. When you win a battle, you will receive one of five rankings. The higher your rank, the more experience points you'll receive. Your ranking is based on how fast you defeat your enemies and how little damage you take. Here are the rankings. Highest rank is excellent. You get full experience points. Might get an item. Great. Good. Etc. Alright, hey, we're finally done with that. 
So before we move though, we're gonna turn around and grab that. Telepathy shard. there was a way to return to where we came from, but we might not have the ability to do that yet. Oh, is that it? Is this where we need to go? reaction. Let's return out here real quick. So I like these uh, these little environmental interactions. I know I mentioned that before, but it's just it puts a lot of life in a world where you're normally sitting on top of a dragon. <laughs> like you are flying around in this in this setting, uh, kind of far above everything else. So it's it's interesting always to see these like little things we can touch. Oh no, I didn't want to enter that. Oops. Another field map, perfect. I can't destroy it, so we don't have enough, uh, the dragon's lasers are two weeks. So we don't have enough uh, lock-on to destroy these fans yet. So uh, the dragon's power will level up as we play, and that will affect how, uh, how and what we can destroy. I need to figure out where we are so that I don't miss anything. Okay, good. I am I'm going back the right way. So I have these two fans I can't break and then just like random stuff around here. All right, and you'll see that our radar is changing colors. Uh, and that indicates the possibility for battle. Much like uh, Shin Megami Tensei or, or Persona 2, I mean, uh, much, much like the way that that worked in Persona 2. There we go. All right, sweet. I should have moved. Yeah, that was only a good fight. So we can sort of grind in this game. 
it isn't actually that useful though. Um, in general, your experience rate will drastically decrease, and the only way to- oh fuck, I didn't mean to go in there. Uh, the only way to get more experience is to increase your, uh, your rating at the end of a fight. Uh, and once you increase it to a certain degree, like, that's kind of it. You aren't gonna get uh, a huge amount more. Patter go. Bad. So you use A to just instantly target with the gun, and B to just instantly target with lasers. Great fight. Nice. You'll see our experience went up, our dine went up. So one of the things that's kind of interesting is that uh, they mention that the currency used by the Empire is called Impenya coin, but the currency that we use in the game is called Dine. I don't know if that is meant to imply that we are not members of the Empire, that we're just in a different area. Raise up, hit save. So we've had our first fight. 